Hi, my name is John. Today I'll be finishing the larger pulley for my R8 spindle upgrade on my tag. Welcome to another episode. In the last episode I had problems with wobble on the pulley because the bore through the center of the pulley was not completely perpendicular to the axis of rotation, or I should say, the axis of rotation that I wanted. In the last episode, I had not yet uh, reboard the new plug that I put in. When I finished reboring that, I put it on the, the motor and discovered that it was wobbly again. In other words, my fix didn't work. I had the exact same problem that I had before. The question is why? I spent a lot of time thinking about it and trying out in my head various different theories as to what was happening and finally realized that I had skipped one step when I set up my milling machine, which is that I had not set the column to be perfectly perpendicular. All I had done is trammed the mill, but tramming is not the same thing as aligning the column in the X and the Y, or I should say the XZ and the YZ plane. So I went back and once I realigned the column and then made another plug, bored it out again and put it on the motor, then everything came out just perfect. Let's head to the workshop and uh, I'm going to show you a few things about how I did that. What I want to show you is these are the shims that I put in here and there's another shim in the back. These are feeler gauges that are just the right length to fit in and I put them in so that they're protruding just a little bit so that I can pull them out to change them and I had to change them quite a bit because this one interacts with this one. So I would change this one and then discover I would have to change that one in the back. I would change that one and then discover I would have to change this. Eventually I got them so it was just the right combination. Once I had the column vertical then it was time to tram the head and I needed to tram the head in both the X and the Y directions. For the Y direction I have a little piece of shim. Again this is some of the feeler gauge stock back here. And uh, this is again sticking out so that I can easily change it. I changed it a few times until I got it just right. This the feeler gauge set that I was using. I believe I got this from Harbor Freight, but I'll put a link down below. I may have gotten it from Amazon. The nice thing about this feeler gauge set, as I said, is that they're fairly short, so they fit well underneath the different places where they need to go. And it has this thumb screw so you can remove the screw and then just remove the individual feeler gauges and uses them, use them as shims. This is the arrangement that I use to square up the column. It's, it's not exactly the same because I have the vise mounted back on the table. When I did this I had the one, two, three block in the center. And what you want to do is move the Y until it just touches. And you can see I'm getting some rotation there. This is a tenth indicator. And then what you want to do is move it uh, up in Z. And I've got a, a mill in here right now, so I don't want to move it all the way up. Uh, also, I haven't made sure that there are chips. There aren't any chips underneath. So I'm not doing exactly what you want, but this gives you the idea of what I did. This allowed me to square it up in the YZ plane. And then I moved it to the side of the one, two, three block. And that allowed me to square it up in the XZ plane. Now when I did this, as I said, I had the one, two, three block in the center of the bed. I wanted it in the center because that's probably where there's going to be the least slop and where it's going to be the closest to completely horizontal in both directions. Once I had the column squared up, then I used the usual approach to tram. For the tramming, I, I could loosen some screws and then push it a little bit this way to get it lined up for this direction. And then for this direction, that's where I used the shim in the back that I showed you in the previous shot. I didn't take a lot of video during the process for this week's episode because I was in troubleshooting mode. I didn't know what was going on. I was really confused by things. I thought a lot and the video would have just made that whole process harder. So that's one of the reasons this video is shorter than typical episodes. I hope you enjoyed it nonetheless. If you liked it, please give me a thumbs up. Uh, please subscribe. If you didn't like it, uh, let me know why you didn't like it. Uh, I'm trying to make the episodes better. So your feedback always helps. 
Next time I'm going to finally get to assembling the R8 spindle for my Tegmach project to be able to hopefully bring it online very soon. See you next time.